I hope you're all well. So today we're going to create a shadow knockout text. These look amazing. There's a few steps involved, but once you get the hang of it, it's definitely worth the effort. I'm going to show you how you can do it in Design Space. Now you can do it in external programs such as Inkscape. Inkscape and I are not the best of friends. I don't know why, it just always crashes for me. But if you want to do it in Inkscape, then there are plenty of channels on YouTube that will help you with that. But today I'm going to show you how you can do it in Design Space. First of all, we need a base text layer. So we're going to grab a text box. Now you want a uniform font. Fonts like Times New Roman, fonts like Impact, they work really well because the letters are pretty uniform. What you don't want is a swirly font. You don't want something like this with party time or seasonal. You want it nice and uniform. It will make your life a lot easier. You want to make sure that your base text is all in capitals as well. The other thing is that you want your letters to be as close to each other as they can be without actually touching. So you want to reduce the letter space down. You can see my R and my E are very, very close and my V and my E are very close. If we just go down one more, I think we can, they're, they're very close, but they're not actually overlapping. Now they're overlapping, so we just go back up one. But I'm going to keep them there because I can actually see a gap. So we're not completely overlapping, which is fine. You just want them as close as they can be. We're then going to create our second text layer. And this is also going to become our shadow layer as well. So we want to grab a text box and we're going to use the font I Love Glitter. This is the perfect font for doing knockout with. There are two ways you can obtain I Love Glitter. The first one is in Creative Fabrica. Now it is $8, but this comes with the commercial license. So if you're going to sell your finished product and you've used I Love Glitter, you will need the commercial license to do so. As I say, it's $8, or if you are part of their subscription service, depending on which one you are subscribed to, you may obviously get it within that subscription. You can also get it for free from defont.com. Obviously, because it's free, you're not getting the commercial license with it. So if you are using the free version, then you can only be using it for personal use. You then want to write your text. I am going to add glyphs in by holding down my shift key and then pressing the relevant uh, key that goes with it. I have done a tutorial on this and I should also show you in that tutorial how you can get all the glyphs and swirls using your character map. I will link to that in the description below. I'm just going to hold shift and then dash and then I'm going to write my text. Again, I'm going to hold shift down and I can't think what this key is called. It's like the, the slanty one. I, I can't remember what it's called. Then write my second word and then again shift and dash. Because this is a cursive font I want all my letters to be overlapping so I'm just going to use my letter space to bring them in. I Love Glitter is really good. Very, very rarely do you actually have to ungroup it and manually move them. Most of the time you can do that using the letter spacer. I'm really happy with that. I'm just gonna change the color to make it easy to see. Once you're happy with what's going to be your shadow layer, you just want to highlight it all and you want to make sure that you weld it together. Because these are all overlapping, if you just cut it as it is, it will cut out the overlapping bits as well. So you do want to make sure it welds together and it will then cut as one continuous cut. I'm then going to bring it over to my base layer and I'm just going to size it up to kind of where I want it. There's no right or wrong when doing this, but you do want the text on top of the text. So these extra bits here, they can of course be outside of the base layer, but the text you want on top of each other. I'm just going to highlight both and I'm just going to align and center vertically 
and just make sure that I'm happy with that. At this point, we're going to turn this top layer into a print. You're not going to print, it's just so you can create the shadow layer. So you don't want to size up your item to its actual size because you need to make sure that you are within the parameters of print and cut. So make sure that you're not actually doing all your sizing now. To turn it into a print, we're going to come up to fill and we're going to select print and we're going to hide our base layer. We can then go to make it and continue. We're going to select send to printer we're not printing as I say. You want to make sure the bleed is on. It's very, very important that you've got the bleed on. This is what's going to create that shadow layer. And you also want to select system dialog. You can then choose print. The system dialog will then come up and you'll see in your printer options, everyone will have the option of Microsoft XPS document writer. This is the one you want to select. You then want to go to print. As I say, it's not actually going to print, so don't panic. It's going to bring us into our picture so that we can save the XPS document. So we're just gonna save it as file one and then select save. We can then close down our print setup and go to cancel. And again, we're going to cancel and go back to our canvas. We can then turn this back into a cut. So we're going to go back up to fill and select no fill. I also just want to change that color back to red. If we come into our picture folder, you'll then see the XPS document. We're going to double click that to open it. And we're going to click on the magnifying glass so that we can see the whole image there. You then want to go to your search bar. So if you're in Windows, you'll go to your search bar. If you are in Mac, you'll do a screenshot. In Windows, I'm going to search for the snipping tool and select that. Choose new. And then I'm just going to draw a box around my shadow layer. And that will turn it into a JPEG image. We can't export XPS into Design Space, which is why we need to take a snip of it so that we can then turn it into a JPEG. I'm just going to save that as Capture One. Back in Design Space, we can go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and you're going to select the JPEG and go to Open. As always, you want to select it as a complex image. This will keep it at its absolute max resolution. Go to Continue. We're then going to remove the background layer. So all the white pieces, we're just going to select and remove those. If you make a mistake and click on the wrong bit, you can just go to undo and you can zoom in to make it easier. Once you've removed the background, you can go to continue and you want to save as a cut image and then select and insert the image to the canvas. You want to rotate it so that it's the right way round and you also want to arrange and move backwards. Again, I like to change the colour just to make it easier to work with. Let's go with orange. Oh no, let's go with green. We're going to bring it behind our top layer and we're then just going to size them up. So this one needs to be a little bit smaller. Sometimes you can get it straight away and sometimes you find you might have to play just a little bit. So that's perfect. I'm really, really happy with that. So we're going to hide our red layer. We just want our shadow layer and our base layer. Make sure that you're happy with the positioning of everything. I actually want to move that down just a little bit. I'm then going to select my shadow layer and my base layer and I'm going to go to slice. You'll see I actually end up with four layers. So I've got my top layer, my second layer, my third layer and my fourth layer. I want to keep the second layer so the other three I can just delete. So this is my base layer and then my top layer will then sit in there. I moved it slightly so I can then just come in and move that back to its correct position. 
And that's how it's then going to look. So we're going to cut our forever and transfer it all as one piece. And then we're going to do our second text layer exactly the same way and place that onto our base layer. Now is the time to size it up. So I'm just going to highlight both and I'm going to choose them to be the size that I want. You want to make sure that you are doing it both at the same time because it will keep them as they should be. And we can then go to make it. You'll see we've got our two layers and we can go to continue. For my base layer, I'm just using a normal Cricut vinyl. So if we scroll down to vinyl, I'm using premium vinyl today. So I'm just going to select that one and go to done. And for my second layer, I'm going to use the Cricut Holographic Threads vinyl. Oh, I love this vinyl so much. I got it from the States when I was in the States before Christmas. It's not yet available in the UK, but it is available in the States. So if you're watching in the States or Canada, you will be able to pick it up. I am so hoping that it comes over here because it is stunning vinyl. So there we go, premium vinyl holographic threads. If you're changing your vinyl between mats, you do need to make sure that you are changing the cut setting as well. When I'm using Cricut vinyl straight from the roll, I always cut it down to size first. It just makes it easier. And I love my Cricut trimmer. I use it all the time. So this is the holographic threads. Oh my goodness. I bought so many different rolls of these when I was in the States because I didn't know when we'd be getting them. I got a lot of the new vinyls when I was in the States, but these threads are just beautiful and the camera doesn't do it justice, but oh, they're so stunning. And then I'm using a matte black as well. So the matte black is a removable vinyl. The threads is a permanent vinyl. The wood sign is going in the house, so I'm not really fussed about messing with my vinyls. I can have a removable and I can have a permanent. If the sign was going outside, I'd want to make sure they were both permanent. If it was going on a wall or something, then I'd want them both to be removable. But as it's going on a wooden sign in the house, it's not the end of the world if I mix up my removables with my permanents. So I've got my premium threads. It's just so beautiful. I'm just going to place it onto my mat. If it bubbles a little bit, just pull it back up. And then I'm just going to go in with my Cricut brayer because I don't want to scrape this with a scraper. It's very high gloss. So going in with a brayer will just prevent any scratches on the surface of your material. come in and remove my threads layer. I always come in and remove middle sections first. I just find it easier to do. Another thing that I like to do is I like to separate when I'm working with cursive fonts like this, I like to separate the top from the bottom. So I just make a very light incision on one end attached to a cut piece and then the same the other end. This then separates the top section from the bottom section and I just find it's easier when it comes to weeding to do it this way. I can then just remove the top section, nice and easy and simple. I have to say, I do love this threads. As always, I turn my mat over and I remove my mat from the back of my vinyl rather than the other way around. Make sure you do it in small sections, not to snap your mat and it will prevent your vinyl from curling. So we've got our base layer and our shadow layer now. And we're just going to be placing it onto this piece of wood. I've got some Cricut transfer tape here. I'm going to transfer the base layer first. You want to peel the transfer tape away from its backing. Bring it over to your vinyl. 
and place it directly straight down. You want to roll it on the front, roll it from the back. You then want to peel from the back. This is the easiest way to do it and it gives you the most control. You'll also find that if you are peeling back and you've got a little bit, say for example here, that's still stuck on the back sheet, you just place it straight down and just use your fingers to adhere it to the transfer tape. It means you're not going to lose your space. So I just find it's easier to do it this way and it just gives you a lot more control. When it comes to transferring, I just hover it over where I want it to go and make sure that I'm happy with the placement and I then place it straight down. I can then go in with my scraper and really work that into the wood. We can then start peeling our transfer tape back. I find if you roll it like this, again, it gives you more control and it just makes it easier. So that's our base layer then transferred. Next we've got our rain layer and again we're just going to come straight in and place our transfer tape on top of our vinyl. Again you can go in with a scraper or a brayer and just really work that into the transfer tape from the front, then from the back. And then again you always want to remove the vinyl backing just makes it, I find it just makes it a lot easier. If you've got any bits that are not staying to your transfer tape you just place them back down and use your finger to rub them in. You want to take your time when placing your shadow layer in it's normally pretty easy, you can see from the cut marks where it's meant to go and just hover it gently above your base layer. Happy with the placement, you can then place it down and just use your fingers to secure it in place. Go in with your scraper or your brayer and just really work that into the wood. Once you're happy, you can start peeling back your transfer tape. Again, I find that rolling it back at an angle gives you a lot more control and makes it a lot more easier. Our transfer tape can then go back onto its backing and it can be used again. And there we go, there is our shadow knockout text. It seems overwhelming when you first do it. There are a few steps involved in it. As I say, you can use external programs such as Inkscape. I try and do as much as I can in Design Space because I like to be able to show you what you can do in Design Space. And also, as I say, Inkscape and I are not the best of friends. But hopefully, this will help you to be able to create something like this. Please make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted of when I upload a new video. As always, I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, please add them below and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!